Hi everyone and welcome, welcome to Good Days! The Red Ripe Strawberry and the Big Hungry Bear by Don and Audrey Wood. I love this book because it centers around delicious strawberries. It's about a little mouse that goes strawberry picking, but then he realizes that the big hungry bear loves strawberries too. And so the little mouse has to decide what is he going to do to save his strawberries. It's adorable. Your kids are going to love it. To read the entire book and to find out if the big hungry bear gets his strawberry, you'll have to find it at your local library or bookstore today. I hope you're ready for today's adventure because we are on the hunt for the sweetest strawberries in the state of Texas. We're headed to Poteen. Let's go. I am so excited to be here in Poteet, the strawberry capital of Texas, here at the Five Cousins Strawberry Patch. Woo Today I'm joined by Hannah, Hallie, Tess, Jacob, and Caleb, and they're going to teach us all about the world of strawberries, the most delicious strawberries in the big state of Texas. So let's go check out the patch. So Hallie, can you describe a little bit, how did this become the Five Cousins Strawberry Patch? Yeah, so I wanted to show pigs originally. That's how it all started. And my grandpa said, if you're gonna show pigs, then you have to raise some strawberries. And Ooh. he was an ag teacher. So um, that's how this all started. And now we've been doing it for eight years. And wow. now I get to have all these awesome people. We all do it together and it is incredible. Um, so we are the Five Cousins and that's kind of how we got our name, how we got our start. So yeah. That is so cool that it's in the family. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. So Hannah, what is this like to work with family for this batch? It's been the coolest experience. Uh, we have so much fun together. Everything from singing as we're planting to singing as we're harvesting to having rotten berry fights and all of the fun things that cousins ah. get to do, but in like an agriculture setting, which is almost more fun. Yeah. So. Oh my goodness. That sounds like so much fun. Do you guys sing? Yes. We all right. <laughs> we all try. <laughs> How long does it take to pick all the strawberries in this patch? Depends on the amount of hands that we have working. Uh, we enlist the help of friends and neighbors when we get into festival time. Uh, so it can take anywhere from several hours to maybe mm. three so that's wow we can go all the way from like six hours of picking if we have like three people to like three hours if we have seven people so there are nine thousand plants in this field so hannah i'm so interested to learn how do you get your red ripe strawberries what is the process of growing amazing strawberries like this so our process begins in mid-October when we take a crown and a stem. They look kind of like this one. This one's kind of dried up, but we've got the crown right here and the root system. We get these shipped in and then we put them into the ground mid-October. We're fertilizing them. We're watching them, trying to make sure that the roots get cemented in the ground so that even if the freeze hits, it only takes out the leaves and that it, the foliage can come back in February mm -hmm. so that they can start becoming really big and really flourishing in our environment. So through that time, we're just waiting, we're cutting off the blooms so that we can wait for the plants to get mm -hmm. cemented in the ground. If you look right here, you can see that these little blooms, they've got the little flowers, all the petals have fallen off. And right in there, if you look really closely, there's actually the beginnings, oh, let me get it. The beginnings of a little strawberry in there and then they kind of start growing out they become these green ones we've got right here um, and then they start getting bigger and bigger and they turn into the beautiful red color that little mouse has in the book so the blooms, uh, we have cut them, we, we start cutting them off after the plants get planted so that the 
berries don't produce until late February, which is when our harvest season begins. As long as we control the blooms and cut them off, the, the plants can't produce, which allows them to put all of their energy into flourishing and getting nice and big so that they can produce nice strawberries later. That's what we're looking for. And our season runs through May, and because we live in Texas, it gets really hot in mid-May, no and the berries <laughs> just kind of fry Ooh. on the plastic. So after that, we uh, take the plastic up and mm -hmm. we till under the soil. Uh, wow. My grandfather usually spreads peas or some little interim thing. We don't harvest them we just help them replenish the soil then we till it up for next october and we do it all again that is so interesting most of us including myself we go to the strawberry patches or better yet just buy them in the grocery store and we enjoyed strawberries all season long but i didn't know until today what it really takes to to produce a strawberry so this just gives me a greater appreciation of all the hard work it takes your family and growers all across America what it takes to get that strawberry on your table. So Hallie, I have to ask, why is Poteet the strawberry capital of Texas? Absolutely. So it all began actually in the early 1900s when a man named Gustav Eigner was a native from Florida and he grew strawberries there and he came to Poteet. Um, and when Henry T. Mummy, the guy who founded Poteet, met him here, his wife uh, bet Mr. Eigner that he could, if he could have strawberries by Christmas, then his wife would give him a brand new Stetson hat, which they're pretty expensive, so that's yes. an awesome bet. <laughs> um, so there's actually a picture. Mr. Eigner won the bet, and he was able to produce strawberries here in Poteet's sandy loam soil before Christmas. Um, there's a picture of him handing Miss, I Miss Mummy the hat full of strawberries, and so he wow. was the pioneer of the strawberry farming community in Poteet, and and that's an awesome story that we love to look back on and get excited about, especially during the time of the Strawberry Festival, which this yes. year it is the 75th annual Strawberry Festival. Wow! Um, so we're really excited about getting to celebrate that and getting to celebrate our community. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where why we're the capital of Texas. And you had mentioned too that growing. the soil is perfect for strawberries. Yes. Is, is there some kind of scientific thing it about is, the soil? Yes, absolutely. So they, um, it's a sandy loam soil mm -hmm. and um, it's high in acidity. Like mild acidity. It's mild in acidity. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of why uh, strawberries grow so great here. And it's interesting because there's a lot of similar soil in California and Florida. Ah, and so that's that why sense. you see a lot of strawberry growing there also. So. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We have now come to the sweetest part of the episode, the taste test. And Tess is going to share with us the two different varieties of strawberries that they have here at their patch. So, uh, the bigger one that you have in your hand are called Albion strawberries. They are def usually pretty big. They get to a big size. They're very red and they're my personal favorite. And then the smaller one you have in your head are called Ruby June strawberries. Uh, they may not be that big, but boy, are they very sweet. And which one is your favorite? I like Albion's. All right, so, well, let's see what an Albion tastes like. Mm. Look how deep and red that is. That is the epitome of a red ripe strawberry. A vine ripe, red ripe strawberry. No wonder the mouse wanted one so bad and the big hungry bear was after it. Wow, that is incredible. Deliciously sweet, perfect texture. That is the perfect strawberry, guys. Wow. All right, so this is Ruby June. Okay, all right, the Ruby June. Let's taste it. Mmm. Equally as sweet, maybe just a little bit more acidic but perfect. They're both perfectly ripe and just really ultra delicious, guys. I mean, this is what you think about the spring, fresh fruit. This is the ultra day trip right here. Did you know that there are actually 600 different varieties of strawberries and all of them have their own specific taste and how they look. Oh. So 
all of them are very unique in their own way. But it's definitely hard to choose a favorite. Out of those two, which one is your favorite? Mm, probably the bigger one, the, the Albion. Albion. Yeah. So I have to ask, these strawberries have to take a lot of water to get to this point. What does that look like here? Do you guys do it manually? Do you have a system? Well, that's a very good question because, I mean, look at this. It'll take a very long time to hand water all of them, no of doubt. course. So we use something <laughs> called a drip irrigation mm -hmm. system. We have pipes, if you see right here. There's a little mm -hmm. line right here, and that's a pipe, and we fill it up with water, and there are holes in the pipe, and it drips mm -hmm. out. The strawberries don't need too, too much water, or mm -hmm. else they will become transparent because it's like they fill up with water. Oh, and definitely... Wow not the best to eat, uh, I have yeah. to say. But, <laughs> so that's how we do our irrigation and that works pretty well. We do it about two times a day for mm -hmm. three hours. Oh, wow. That is awesome. I cannot imagine watering these thousands of plants by hand. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. So right here we have a prime case of a strawberry genetic mutation. We call these viviparies. They are little plants that have started growing foliage right out of the seed uh, pores, if you will, of the strawberry. And we, uh, a strawberry on average has about 200 seeds. Wow. And so this has 200 little foliage leaves. Unfortunately, if you were to plant it, it would not be viable, but they are kind of fun to look at. No doubt. It, it's like a strawberry that needs a haircut. Pretty wild. Now it's strawberry picking time. All right, let's go. strawberries you know you can smell out the best strawberries of your patch so can you explain what what is the best red ripe strawberry yes I can do that so look this strawberry right here we can see is a little bit squishy mm -hmm. so that would be oh, yeah. some people would think okay that's that's good but then this part right there that's a little overripe ah. and this one it's almost there but it's got some white right there too Ooh. and this one is like mm -hmm. so it's got white all i mean red all around here and here so it's perfect so i think that one's pretty good uh -huh. but the best one is when they're like purple around oh. and not really like you can pick some like orangish kind of uh -huh. ones but I think the best ones are like kind of purplish, like that one over there, that big one. Yeah, let's see. Can you show it to yes, us? Yes, we can. So this one right here would be wow. perfect. It is big, so I might want to leave it for the for the show. But, sure. Uh, the this one would this one's kind of like a smaller version of it. So, like, you might want to like how I did like that, uh -huh. get the sand off, and yeah, it's this is probably the best berry I could I could find right now in this row, but it's. That's, I think, how you tell it's a really good berry is mm -hmm. when it's kind of purplish or it is still good when it's kind of like this, like orangish. But yeah, I think that's how you tell wow. it. <laughs> well, thanks so much for your expert advice on how to pick berries. So <laughs> you'll have to remember next time you go to a patch, find the ones that are purplish and do that. Can you do it one more time? <laughs> to shake <laughs> all the sand and the dirt off. Yes. That is a pro tip for sure. Thanks so much for joining us on this delicious adventure here at the Five Cousins Strawberry Patch. We hope that you've had a delightful time learning all about strawberries in regards to our feature book of the day, The Little Mouse, The Red Ripe Strawberry, and The Very Hungry Bear. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. We'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.
Want more book days? Well, the adventure has only begun. Check out these episodes and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures.